2020. And green is just some ideas of, of um, where QTAC is now. So starting at the top right hand corner, um, in early January, February in 2020, when the um, pandemic started to emerge, our um, executive team were working hard on the business continuity plan, making sure that was up to date, you know, predicting ahead. In February, we developed a new work from home policy, which complemented the existing policies, which had flexible working policies and, and other aspects of that. So those were things that were being done to, so I guess, preempt. So instead of being at the tipping point on, you know, people being able to work from home and so on, we were, were preparing in advance for that. But um, obviously, you know, one, one never knew what was ahead. Um, there were lots of other things in the business as usual there, but going into the the, um, the creative destruction phase, that the chaos phase that we that we had to go through. Well, business. Um, QTAC is um, very much a face-to-face -face or person-to-person -person contact organisation. Um, our, our customer service area, the call centres, you know, um, very busy on the phones all day to students and guidance officers, schools, institutions and so on. And so um, they couldn't afford to be floundering and not able to, to take those calls. They had to move very quickly into um, through the reorganisation phase and be able to work from home when that first lockdown came to us um, here in Queensland at, at the end of March, I think it was, last year. Um, there were no in-person school presentations, which were our bread and butter, no on-campus open days. Um, it, with, with the lockdowns, managing family, um, work-life balance, there were lots of unknowns cropping up all the time. You know, Year 12 exams in Queensland. Of course, last year was a big year for Queensland because we, um, our Queensland Curriculum Authority it was our first year of moving to the new Year 12 system. And so, and together with that, you had um, external exams for the first time in sort of 20 years or so. So it was always going to be, you know, are those going ahead, changes in assessment, all of those sorts of things. Um, not necessarily chaos, but they were things that one had to manage. Um, but having said that, um, with the changes, we had changes and the innovation came into where people were working, when people are working, um, the online expos at universities, many of you will have been involved in moving to the online expos. Obviously this conference is in a perfect example of, of that sort of innovation. Um, developing contingency plans is not just a question of your normal communications and making sure those are spot on, but then contingency plans, you know, what if, what if we can't get results from other states, you know, what will happen to those students' applications, all those sorts of things um, coming coming through. Um, you know, connecting with our stakeholders, um, instead of just connecting three or four times a year through formal meetings with our normal business as usual, we started what we call the COVID campfires, and that was a Every, every two weeks, getting together informally with our key stakeholders, you know, sharing what was happening. Does anybody know about this? Has anybody heard that? You know, sharing links and so on. And those have continued into this year. So looking at, I guess, the green, um, the green um, ovals, um, we've gone, we, we, um, we have um, a rig we've now moved to a hybrid model of work work from home and in office. We can't socially distance with everybody in the office, and so we have sections that are say a three plus two model, and that's now sort of a permanent ongoing um, way of working, and that helps us to manage any sort of sudden lockdowns and to socially distance and so on, but also to manage work life balance. So that's just one idea, one way um, in which you can sort of understand that transformation. But what's important is that taking the opportunity to, you know, tra transform and not just um, not just survive, I guess. Um, the other thing that drawing on some of my university um, background, very um, passionate about learning spaces and also, you know, with a lot of, lot of time spent in supporting um, universities in their online learning and um, course development, um, connecting up distributed regional campuses and so on. Um, I... Of course, as soon as we went into um, working from home, that gave us the opportunity to think about, OK, well, it is a distributed work environment and to um, not just uh, and to actually learn from that. So um, I um, set up a bit of a project. We surveyed our QTAC staff to understand the context of what they were doing and, and understanding, you know, trying to learn from that experience, um, immediate improvements as well as long term and developing some good practice guidelines. 
So um, the results, and as we will have seen through a lot of research, and I'm sure that you know, just through our own experience, you know, certainly there was um, you know something of a of a productivity um, you know advance in, in some ways. So um, the a tool that I'd like to share with you is what well, I don't know a tool, but I guess a concept is the six dimensions of the distributed work environment. So part of my PhD work was um, looking at um, was defining the learning environment, and I worked out there was five dimensions: space, the time, the people, social aspects, connectedness, and um, the technological. Then moving into the corporate environment, um, I realized well there's one one dimension which one would add in that environment which is the productivity and so using those six dimensions is what i use to um to base the survey and to gather feedback from our people as a framework for understanding how we are working and how we could then learn from that into the future so just a few selected findings from that research the first of all we get the people and the social aspect um, very important, you know, staff well-being came up as a very strong, strong aspect and how people were managing that, learning from that, keeping that work-life balance, um, increased productivity, but also, you know, continuity of staff. Um, the access to flexible working arrangements that were, and things like that, um, and the um, good practice in the, um, in the online communications and keeping con connected and so on. Um, so those are just some of the features. If you're sort of applying it to your own situation, those are just some of the sorts of aspects that one might find. Um, connectedness and well-being, um, very important to understand, to get the feedback from our people within our own content. Yeah. And our, the, the survey was done about sort of six to eight weeks into our, our lockdowns. And so, we, you know, it was very much in the moment that we were trying to find out what, you know, how people were faring. Um, so face to face contact enhancing productivity um, you know that's that was um, not um, that was really important to hear from our people um, maintaining contact across teams was, was not an easy thing within teams easy but not across teams um, you know so CEOs um, virtual breakfast things like that um, but one had to then work really hard on those strategies to get that incidental um, tea, tea room photocopier chats happening, which weren't, which couldn't happen because you weren't in the office at that time. And now that we know, now, now that we have some in the office, some not, not in the office again, you still have to really focus on that. The temporal or the time dimension is an important one, especially in the workplace. So we obviously have our, our core service hours where we, where we need to be able to be respond to, you know, to the public face and so on. Um, but people with other responsibilities at home, when you're working at home and you've got family commitments, people were then sort of finding the days were longer and um, work. So for some people that worked, that they could, you know, work a slightly longer day, but, you know, have time in the middle. For other people, they said, look, the day just never ended. And so finding those strategies going forward, if this is how we're going to work into the future, we need to make sure that we can, um, you know, manage that without, um, you know, and so that's, uh, you know, that's something our managers became very aware of. Um, and the time saving, of course, is something that um, time saving from not having to commute um, has been certainly welcomed by, by many people as well. Um, and, you know, that's an ongoing saving. Yeah. You know, where people are working, um, we onboarded people from, you know, other areas instead of having to come into the office because, you know, especially IT, big projects and so on last year with rolling out the ATAR and all the systems associated with that. So that gives you the capacity to onboard people. And, well, people have been doing that for many, many decades. It's a question of within our context and context, and that just becoming then um, the norm. So being able to engage with our stakeholders, um, especially things like our virtual presentations that, that we did um, instead of going into schools, unable to do that, but we connect, you know, we had an incredibly successful year with a lot of presentations to schools, regional, remote, um, you know, in the city and so on, which, you know, previously um, we hadn't used the online medium that much. And so that was a, a massive change. Um, you know, there's the productivity and I guess the, you know, straight from, straight, you know, from our people saying, you know, 
well, our goals can be achieved in ways other than sitting in an office all day. And I guess, you know, we've sort of been telling you that we could do that, but now, now we've shown that we can do it and that we can be, you know, even more productive that way. So those are just some of the productivity aspects that um, are important as using that framework. The technology, of course, you know, is, 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 is I guess, the glue that, you know, making sure you have adequate technology, um, you know, that people have office setups at home and so on. It always takes a little while to make sure that everybody has the equipment that they need for that and so on. But um, the other important thing for us now is, of course, we've got to change the office and change our meeting rooms because you're never going to have everybody in the room together. Um, you know, you might, you know, I think we've had up to about three quarters of a team together, but never the whole team. And so, you know, cameras and audio and um, screens and so on set up. There's been a fair bit of investment in our networks and so on um, at QTAC to, to manage that. And that'll, that'll be ongoing to make sure that we keep up the good practice, but also good, good practice in, um, you know, we, we've got too used to being on Zoom and just having your name up there, not putting on your video camera. And we always have a, you know, must have your camera on when you're in a meeting, sort of um, unwritten policy, because, um, you know, that keeps up that visual contact and be able to, um, we've also been, you know, given um, some of our people media training so that you can, you know, engaging better in uh, engaging more directly with people that you're working with and so on. So what people found difficult about work from home experience, you know, man managers managing their teams remotely, you're not getting the body language and so on. So finding ways to connect up, making sure you understand how those people are going um, for the, you know, being just aware that for some people not being surrounded by people in the positive workplace makes the work seem harder and the days seem longer. You know, particularly, you know, young staff work at working from home, working alone and so on. Um, be able to separate work and family's time, leisure time. These are all things which I'm sure that um, most of us, if not all of us, can relate to. But um, when you, you know, when you want to um, move forward with good practice um, guidelines for the future and so on, these are the important um, aspects to remember. Of course, what's really important is, you know, well, what worked well? You know, what was that positive feedback? So it's that general stress reduction by being at home and not always having to commute into the office. Um, you know, strengthening the collegial relationships, um, different ways in which people are doing that. We had some, you know, very innovative ways that people do that. You know, people really appreciated the time to focus on their health and well-being and so on with a little bit more time in the day. Um, financial savings on um, coffees and lunches, things like that, not, not to mention the transport and, I guess, working with our pets, you know. Um, I think one starts to miss not having the, the dogs and cats in the meeting rooms when you're actually in the office. So yeah, I'm getting um, close to close to the end of my time. So um, you know, I asked you to sort of think about you know, well, how resilient is your organisation? So hopefully, you know, with the the waves of the tsunami of change that's um, moved through, I've given you you know some some tools, some things to think about. You know, whether you're hanging onto the life ring and bob up and down, you're not going to sink. Um, you know, you'll float around, you might not have a lot of control where you go, but at least you know that you're not going to get overtaken by those waves. Alternatively, you know, for the adventurous, you know, hop on that surfboard, surf it, you know, go for that transformation and um, and so on. So that's, um, yeah, so those are the, um, some tools for survival in a changing environment. So um, I'm, you know, happy to share references and, um, and contact details and so on. So... Yeah, so over to you, Kathy, and I'm happy to answer any questions that um, have come through. Yeah, thanks, Janet. That was a great presentation and wonderful insights. And we do actually have a few questions um, that people have written in. So did you want to read them yourself or do you want me to read them out just in the um, If you read them out, um, I'll, I'll, sort of, I'll get the presenter chat up. But I think you, if, you, if you focus on that, because I won't scroll through. No, that's fine. And we may not get through them all now, but we'll have an opportunity to answer them afterwards. So uh, first one is, any tips for migrating the danger of spiralling out of control when in the creating destruction phase? Um, I suppose it does depend on, on, on um, how well prepared you are. So that's the resilience. So, um, you know, I guess how well prepared you are in certain ways. I mean, you know, with a catastrophic bushfire situation, there's nothing that you can do. But, you know, as we've, um, it does come down to, I mean, it really comes down to um, 
the resilience and having having lots of having having flexibility and I suppose just being aware that that may happen. So if you think that if, if you're aware that there may be a bushfire or that or be aware that gee you know we're in a drought phase it's going to get worse and worse and worse and if a bushfire happened it's going to be catastrophic. But if you're in a drought phase and you're aware that there's going to be a bushfire, well, what do you do? You clean your gutters. You 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 know you create your 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 fire um, your fire breaks and so on. So you get yourself prepared so that you know should that happen, um, you are prepared in some way um, and so on. So that's you know and, and re reading the environment is probably my 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 thing. So yeah, and just being being aware of it. and that's where these strategies and so on would come in. Yeah. Question, uh, Janet. Um, what are your thoughts on how strict should an organisation be with people who aren't comfortable returning to work or don't want to return to their office spaces for work? Is there any option for not returning to a physical office space? Um, I guess, um, yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to share a personal view on that. Um, it, you know, for in that context, it really does come down to the organisation and their policies. So I guess what they're saying is this is our policy and you're going to have to stick with it. Um, and, you know, and if you can't return and so on. I mean, I guess it does come down to, you know, um, the policies and the worker rights and those sorts of things. I mean, but I guess, you know, off, off the record or so, um, I mean, the evidence, is, the evidence is there that people can be as productive, if not more productive, in that other environment. If they, if they can fulfil the tasks and the duties and show that, they, you know, they, you know, um, you know would that not be a reason for the organisation to say, well, you know, if you, if you can continue business as usual that way? Um, but unfortunately, you know, people do sometimes draw the line on 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 that. And I mean, we've seen that with, um, you know, you, while you might have policies and so on, you then have the enterprise agreements that are now being renegotiated. I'm sure that you've all been involved in some some way in, in that as well, where you know these COVID policies and so on are now being brought into that. So, um, but I, I, I think it. Um, you know, I think it does come down to, you know, unfortunately, people will have to follow the letter of the law. But I think the letter of the law might actually be in, in favour of the worker rather than necessarily the organisation as far as that goes. But um, I guess, you know, practically, yeah, if you can do the job better um, as it always efficiently from home, it's, hopefully there's not too many more reasons not to. We're actually um, at the end of our session time, but for those that uh, still have a question unanswered, um, Janet will be able to provide an answer back in this uh, this area. So that will happen um, after the session. So thank you very much, Janet. It was a wonderful presentation. And thanks to everybody for participating and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Cathy, and thanks, everyone.